Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our final session for this conference, which is presented by Marietta Klaassen, and it's sec uh, session six on positive thinking in sport. I'm Professor Leon van Hikerk, and it's my pleasure to introduce Marietta Klaassen to you all. Marietta is a registered counseling psychologist in private practice in Pretoria since 1985, and she specialized in sports psychology since January 1994. She's also a very keen runner and a member of this, the, the, the Eagle Sport Club, the, which is a road running club in Elardes Park. Who comp uh, and she competed in several ultra marathons, including the Comrades Marathon, as well as the London Marathon. She also did several long distance cycling races like the Cape Argus. And she believes that physical exercise contributes greatly to a healthy body and a healthy mind. She completed her master's degree in psychology from the University of Pretoria and is currently a full member of quite a number of societies, namely the Psychological Society of South Africa, the South African Sport Medicine Society, the European College of Sport Science, the European Federation for Sport and Exercise Psychology, as well as the International Society for Sport Psychologists. She works within all the different sport disciplines in South Africa, from professional and national level to social uh, sport participation, and from senior level to primary school uh, at junior level. As well as athletes from different sport types preparing for different levels of competition, from junior level up to Olympic and world champions in swimming, and diving, running, triathlon, tennis, cycling, gymnastics, golf, wrestling, and believe it or not, MMA. She holds various accolades and worked with many of our South African champions and elite athletes in various sport types. It is my pleasure to welcome Marietta, who's going to do a workshop on positive thinking in sport. Welcome, Marietta. Good afternoon, ladies. Ladies and gentlemen, and thank you, um, Professor Fanika, for the kind um, introduction. And also thank you for the opportunity to be here as a presenter at this very first South African Conference on Sports Psychology and Development. From the presentations of all the previous speakers, it is clear that sports psychology has the power that enhances performance. But it's more than just the sports person's performance that is enhanced. Um, it is his or her confidence, emotional control, and ability to concentrate or focus that are increased. I am in private practice and I'm specializing in sports psychology and as you heard I work with many different sport types and different ages. But the one thing that all my clients have in common is that they want to win. They want to be the very best. And we know that success in sport is largely due to the strength of the athlete's mind, and not just due to the strength of the body muscles. 
to have the right mindset and the ability to perform under pressure and to enjoy it is of vital importance in sport. Gary Player once said, a strong mind is one of the key components that separate the great from the good. But what does these words actually mean? Have a strong mind. You need to be, you need to have the strong mind. Um, jou kop moet sterk wees. Of jou kop moet reg wees. What does this mean to a primary school sports player or swimmer or athlete or even to the wrestlers? Or even to a high school boy or girl dreaming of becoming part of a South African national team, going to Olympics or going to world championships? or even to become a professional sports per person. In my work with young sports people, I often get the question, where is your mind? What is your mind? And to answer them, I explain that your mind actually greatly represents your thoughts, your thinking. We know and we have heard it from every speaker in this conference that positive self-talk or positive thinking is a powerful mental tool or skill that can be learned and we are all I for one personally I think it should be learned and developed from an early age like the previous speaker Dr. Tebby said that um, it should be introduced from this very young age, and I completely agree with it. But why do we have to think and talk positively if we want to be successful, if we want to be the best? Why do we need that positive attitude? I know coaches, parents often say, come on, you have to have a positive attitude. Why is it so necessary for success? And how do you get that positive attitude? And this is what I'm going to explain this afternoon. It's about what do our thoughts actually do? What's the effect of our thoughts on us? Um, and this is now where I need to go to my whiteboard because there's no PowerPoint on this. Just very shortly, what we've heard this conference was, um, we do sport, so all sport has to do with body and mind. Some sports have some technical tools. If you play tennis, if you play cricket, you have a, a technical tool. If you play golf, you have 14 technical tools in your, in your golf bag, which helps body to, to actually do the sport. And mind, mind has four mental tools. And these tools, the previous players also um, already named them. There are only four mental tools. But believe me, they are four powerful mental tools. And that is your goal setting, your positive thinking, your imagery, and your ability to relax. And what do you need to relax to do sport? You need to relax body, and you need to relax mind. Now, in the beginning, Professor Fanika had started, his very first session was that, okay, what is psychology about? Now, Psychology, psychology is for people, of course. We are interested in people. We study people. 
And Professor Leon said that, and this is the shortest summary you can get of psychology. It's about people's thoughts, and it's about people's emotions, and it's about people's actions. And under actions, it's actually, what is actions? Actions is how you react in certain situations under certain circumstances. It's about how you behave in these situations, how you handle the situations or the circumstances, how you cope with that, and how you perform. Remember, performance is everywhere in our daily life. It's not just in sport. So now I come, and the sports psychologist comes, and we say, OK, sports psychology. Good. Now, sports psychology, whether you are a coach, whether you are a sports psychologist, but when you work, with an athlete, it becomes that, it becomes individual. Even if it's a netball team or rugby team, because now it's not just people in general. Now it becomes Mary, Annie, Susie, Jan Piet Kuis, the Bochu, Tabu, whoever you work with. So this can be, let's say, Tabu or Peter, whoever, it's more personal. And what about him? What about if it's a Susie? It's about their thinking, what they think and what they say. First of all, about themselves, but also about the, the competition they're in, about the sport they do, about the situation, the circumstances they find themselves in. It's about their emotions, their feelings. I add this, it's about their focus. And it is about their actions. How do they react? How do they perform? Sometimes, we see it, there's rugby, there's cricket, there's golf, it rains, it's wet. Some sports people do not like to perform or to play when it's wet. When you run, I have many road races. You start, and as you are standing at the start, as long as there is no lightning, you run. And this is for school sports. But it's what you do. To me, it's about what you do do with the situation, with the circumstances you find yourself in. And that is what I'm going to discuss. Now, our thinking. Today, it is about our thoughts. Um, let me do it there. Our thoughts, it's amazing. Thoughts, anything and everything. Anything or actually everything triggers thoughts. Yeah, whatever, what you hear, what you read, what you say, what you think what we smell, what we see, even sometimes what we taste. Our senses provide us and that with information and that triggers thoughts. And it's about what are the thoughts doing. So let me just get all my colors ready now. Good. Your thoughts. And this is why your mind is so powerful, because the first thing when you think about something, it's like, oh, I hope it's not raining today. I have an important netball match, or the school, we have that netball match. What if it rains? Okay, 
and I see be having been here for two days when it was raining in the Eastern Cape in lovely East London, there's no lightning. So, of course you can play netball when there's no lightning. It's just a bit uncomfortable to be wet. But it's not about that. It's about what the sports person think and say. So what happens? The first thing that happens, there's, this is the core of our thinking. Our thoughts activate. There's an activation, so it activates two things. First of all is mental images. Yes, your brain and every single human being's brain, our brains, when we think, when we talk, somewhere here on your mental screen, there appears a picture. Yesterday, for those that were locked in yesterday, Professor Ankeby Kruger said that thing of, and it's about the thinking, don't think about a pink elephant. Okay? So, hmm, some of you might have that pink elephant now in your minds. Because this is what our brains do. Thoughts, it activates mental images. To me, this is a, either a mental photo or when you start to think, and I say you, when you start to think about your activity, if you're an athlete, when we think about things, we have mental movies up here in our minds. Yeah, so depending on what we think, what we say to ourselves, these movies, these images can either be positive, it's those feel-good movies, or you can have those, and I call them, this is my language, horror movies. If you come on back from a training session and mom and dad, when they pick you up, say, the athlete, um, how was your training? Oh, jeez, it was bad. Coach, yell at me. Um, I made this and this mistake over and over, etc. There's no nice feel-good movie up here on your mental screen. It's a horror movie. And you now get home and you tell it to dad. And later on, depending, you might call your boyfriend or your girlfriend and say, I want to, oh, it was such a bad day. And you keep on repeating this horror movie. Okay? But simultaneously, because now remember, simultaneously with the mental images that appears, your thinking activates your emotions. That is where emotions come from. Emotions are not something, some feeling that comes on us like a cloud of mist or dust or something. Emotions are activated by your thinking. What you say to yourself about yourself, about situations or circumstances. And of course, emotions can be those nice, good, positive feelings that makes you feel good. Or emotions can be those negative ones. Anxiousness, even fear, irritation, frustration, sadness, anger, jealousy. We all know the, the positive and the negative emotions. So this is the core of your thoughts. This is what happens when we think. But it goes further. Because the mind is actually very, very powerful. Your thoughts are powerful. Your thoughts direct um, let me make it directs your Focus, ha ha. 
So, what you think and say, remember I said there's movies up here on your mental screen or you are watching now, you, your inner you sits inside watching movies or photos. And we all know that school kids, students, and people sitting in church listening sometimes to a speaker of some sort, you sit and later you're busy. I always say to my students in my lecturing days, it's around the world in 35 minutes because it's only the shell sitting there on the chair. They are somewhere else, doing somewhere. But in your sport, this is very important. Where are your thoughts? When you are getting ready to throw that netball into the ring, where are your thoughts? Where are you? What are you busy? What's the mental image? When you are getting ready for that kick or the putt or the tee shot or whatever, even the start of a swimming or a running race, Sometimes it's like, oh, I started late. Ha <laughs> ha, why? What were you thinking? Where were you? So in psychology, we know this is a fact. You are where your thoughts Oh, Okay. So, an athlete, a coach, but everyone, all of us busy with daily tasks. Where is our thoughts? Where are they? Where should they be if you are in, when you are a sports person, even a referee, when you're a coach? Your focus, we know, focus, and you've heard it from previous speakers, focus should be here, now, present moment focus on this, what I'm doing now, this shot, this kick, this start, this throw. Okay? So, that's what your thoughts are doing with your focus. There's a connection between your focus and the mental pictures up here in your mind. Aha. Uh -huh. So it's like to it's like to imagine your this is your conscious you doing the thinking, the reasoning, the talking part. All of us, no matter of age, from eight to eighty, all of us have an inner me, your inner you, your subconscious. But I like to to refer to that as your inner you or your inner my inner me. It's there. And long gone I've decided that my inner me consists of two. It's actually like a Siamese twin sitting up here, in here, close to your heart. This one's name is focus and this one's name is confidence. So your conscious you are thinking are giving you messages. You are saying things to yourself. I'm not good at this. Oh, I hope I can do this. Oh, no, this. Oh, no, that. I hope not. What, whatever. Or you might say to yourself, yes, I look forward to this. Wow, I enjoy this. I'm ready for this competition, this tournament. Yeah, I've worked hard. I know what I do. I can. And that makes different pictures here on your mental screen. Now focus it and watch the movies or the photos. But confidence, and confidence represents your emotional part. Confidence is either going into, oh, no, oh, and shrinking. And later on, well, the good news, you never lose your confidence because then you could have gone and searched for it. But you shrink it. You shrink poor confidence and let the confidence go here to the back of the mind and go hide in there. Sit there trembling. Or with what you think and say, you can let confidence grow 
big and strong. And though, and we know so many of the athletes of the world in South Africa that they have Goliath in here. Confidence is big and strong. Okay. Now, it's not all that your mind can do. Remember, your thoughts are powerful. So your thoughts also has an effect on your physical state. Now, your physical state refers to body. Yeah, you do sport with body. Now, but there's two, and I'll give a very short summary. You either have this relaxed muscles. Yes, your muscles are relaxing, body can move, you have a very comfortable feeling. Yeah, body feels comfortable. And um, the one that goes with this, and I'm not going into all the, all the different symptoms and things, there's an up in energy. So when there's the positive physical state, this is your positive physical state, you feel, it's when you say, I look forward to something. Yes, I love this. Um, I really want to do it. It's going to be great. Yeah, come on, team. We're ready for this match or game. There's energy in your body. But the other one is the, the, the tight, tensed up muscles. Aha. Uh Marina -huh. um, Fanikak showed us pictures of athletes with facial expressions of elation and worry and sadness, concerns. Um, body posture. An athlete that's worried, the muscles become tight and tensed up. If you stand at the start of a race or the beginning of any competition or match or what, and you start, it depends on what you say. Now, let me just put this in. If you think this here, body will also react because there's all kinds of reactions immediately start. But um, if you go there, if it's this, the negative thinking, body's going to become tight. I hope I don't miss. Just don't lose this one. Just don't make mistake. What if? What if I play badly? What if I lose? Maybe coach will take me out of the team, etc., etc. So tight and tense up muscles. There's an uncomfortable feeling. So body feels comfortable. There's an uncomfortable feeling in body. And what happens to energy? Energy goes down. Oh, yeah, let's go. I need to. Sometimes you think about going to the gym or going to training, and it's just one little thought. Oh, I don't feel like going now. Uh-huh. And then you start to do other things. You start to avoid. But if you think, hey, come on, let's go work on my muscle strength. Let's go take that run. Fitness, I'm getting fitter all the time. Body has more energy. It's like body wants to go. So this is actually then seen as the negative physical state. And there's a connection here. There's a connection between our emotions and our physical state. So depending, if you think there, if you think there, you're going to have that. Body's going to react to that. And also with the negative. And then the last thing. Your thinking, your thoughts, also has an effect 
on. And for those of you that are now locked in and have studied sports sciences or um, psychology and things in your work and that, it has an effect on your brain chemistry. Sometimes the school children do not know about brain chemistry. That is your serotonin, your endorphins, the, the cortisol levels in your brain. But it's not this. What happens? Your brain chemistry, and it affects your mood state. Yeah. We can sometimes determine how a person feels. You can just look at him or and say, uh -huh, she looks in a bad mood today, or wow, you're in a good mood. Because what shows this? We either up or we down. Good mood, you up. Yeah, you feel good, you're full of energy, you feel great. But the down one, uh, no. And immediately an athlete's body posture shows this. The way he stands, the way she's working. So, okay, there's this connection also with emotions and mood state. So, look there. So emotions, that confidence represents your emotions. Yeah, because confidence is an emotion and a thought that it comes from there. I can, I'm good at it, I know how. So the whole of us is actually influenced by our thinking. Look at this my physical state, my emotions, my mood state, the pictures that's on my mental screen, and my focus. Okay, and the cherry on the cake is all this, all of this. You're thinking, and what happens here? This influence your performance. So, meaning your actions. Now, the athletes, the sports people I work with, whether they eight years old or whether they are 18, they want to be the best, the best player that they can be. And some of these young ones, as I said, they have these dreams, golfers. Already they're 10, 11 years old, they say, yo, I want to play for South Africa, like Louis Westhuizen, like Eric Van Rooyen, like Brandon Grace, like all the other South Africans. Some want to be in the Springbok team. Some wants to, they want to be part of the South African national team. So they need to understand. And if you explain to them, this is what they want. Yeah, they all want this. We all want success in life, of course, because success makes us feel good about ourselves. But how to get the success performance that you want? Of course, now it comes back to here. If you think there, uh-uh, no success. You need to think here. That positive attitude that people so often say, hey, come on, you need to have a positive attitude. Where does that come from? It comes from here, okay? Because it involves you. Now, first of all, I want to go to how we actually should not be or should not think. Now, something very interesting about the human brain. I mean, the human brain is absolutely powerful. The human brain puts those um, um, Sputniks and rockets and spaceships up in the air. The human brain helps to go and explore different planets. 
But do you know that the human brain has no mental image for not? Yeah. If I just say, don't, don't, you are waiting, huh? don't. In Afrikaans, it's that muni. Muni. Now you sit and think, muni what? Because our brains have the picture for the other word. Muni morsni. Don't throw your clothes on the floor. Don't leave your clothes on the floor. Don't make a mistake. Don't bend your knees like that. Don't be so slow. Don't this and don't that. And all the brain recognizes is the other word. Golfers would know. You stand there on the tee and you look and you say, whew, water, just don't hit in the water. Yeah, and what happens? The ball goes right there because golfers, do you know there's a big magnet there pulling your golf balls? No, it's your thinking because you have put that picture in your mind. You have direct your focus to that. So, what do you need to do? Cut, eliminate the knot. Get rid of the muni. Knot. And in Afrikaans, we have a double negative. Those of you understanding Afrikaans, you say, muni, foutmark, ni. Muni, mors, ni. Muni, toets, droip, ni. See? English is just the not plus the negative word. Why do we never say, do not win? Muni veni. Muni di bal in gweni. Don't get the kick, you know. We say, don't. Don't kick out in rugby when you in your, what no means the ideal, in your part when you're not supposed to kick the ball out because then it's a penalty against you. Don't miss this, don't this. And it's shocking if we start to think. Parents, parents raise children with not, with money. Teachers, teachers teach children with money, with not. And coaches, coaches, many of them, Coach with not, with muni, or even those negative words. I had a young eight, nine year old in my office. He was really doing his best, but his coach was saying, and he came and that when I saw him after a training session, he was all teary. Because coach was yelling, you too slow, you too slow, you go too slow. Instead of, hey, hey, see if you can go a bit faster. So the first to eliminate is the not, the Afrikaans, muni, muni, mis, ni. Then, of course, with these are all negative words or terms. So this is, this is for coaches, this is for parents, this is for teachers, this is for athletes, for everyone. Cut the negative words. What should you do? You should have, use positive words or terms that can get you to the positive states that you want to be. And very important is this one. Think. Say. And do it exactly. Be specific. The, the previous speakers, all of them said with goals, set those SMART goals. But what does SMART goals mean? The S stands for specific. If you want to put the ball in the hole, tell yourself, okay, come on, let's focus to get this ball in the hole. Instead of telling yourself, don't miss now, muni miss me. So think, say exactly what you want to do. 
what you want to do or what you want to let happen. And even, very important, how you want to be, to perform, how you want to be. Instead of, oh, I hope I don't stress again, like the previous competition. Uh -huh. Now there's a picture. Already you st your focus starts to think and memory recalls the previous time when you were so tight and tensed up. If you want to be relax, and you all heard relaxation is one of these powerful tools, say to yourself, come on, relax. Take a nice deep breath and <sighs> relax. You want to be cool and calm. You want to be confident instead of, don't worry, talking to yourself, very empathetic to yourself. Don't worry, don't stress. Okay, good advice to self? No. So, these things. And then, stop. Stop with to down-talk the self. Or coaches, and it was mentioned by yesterday's speakers, to, to talk in a downgrade way. Your athlete. Stop that. Stop to label yourself or your athlete. Oh, he's a, he's a difficult person. Oh, oh, that parent, that parent always gives me trouble. That's a label. And that, because remember, what we think and say also, it, it, it's linked to our beliefs. It's linked to our perceptions. First of ourselves. And secondly, of other people. So it's about that thing of, oh, that's a difficult parent, or that's a this or that. Or, I want to write this one, label all that negative, very negative self-critique, criticize. Oh, sorry. To criticize yourself. Why that? The other day I had a grade nine, because part of my practice is also um, school subject assessment and things like that. And I said, what is an aptitude test without having mathematics, you know, sums? And this was, I can't do sums, no, I'm bad with this arithmetic. So that was a negative self-perception from that person. So go here. The other one is people that they think and talk about the negative. Come off the field. Hey, how was your game? And then they give you in detail all the negatives, the mistakes. They dwell on that. And what we get here is mostly an outcome focus, the results. Yeah, the results. Come off the thing, oh, yeah. Um, yes, I made three double bogeys today. Or, yes, my tennis game, I lost this and this. But if you think of it, what did you do well? What was good? And even coaches, when your players come from the field or off the track, first give them hey, you did this very well. Oh, you had a good start. Or you had a good this. And then give that opportunity for improvement. I think you should do this next time. And it's an end with something positive, an encouragement. So you will get it right. Just keep on working. And another one here that plays a big role is the try. I try to do it. Uh -huh. Let go of try. It's a negative word. Or to hope. I hope I can get it right. Or to wish. Oh, I wish just once I am successful. And then that one, I'll see. What do you want to see? 
See success. That's what you should see in your mind. And how do you see it? Think it. Say it. What does this do? This gives that negative attitude. This can break you down. All these things, and there are many more, it breaks down. It can even destroy confidence. So, it shrinks your confidence. These, this is a negative mindset to, to find fault, to always moan and groan about things. No, that's negative. And this can lead to an athlete quitting sport. So, what should you do? I said these two things. So here, yeah, motivate yourself. Motivate self. Encourage. Motivation means to want to do this, to feel like doing. In Afrikaans, ek is lust daarvoor. Ek wil graag. Please, encourage yourself. I can. I worked hard at this. I'm good at this. I know how. And then one very important thing that people lack in. It's that boosting self. And yes, this has nothing to do with being a bragger. Uh-uh. This is to pat yourself on the shoulder, to say, wow, well done. I feel good about myself. I feel proud about myself. Yes, I'm chuffed with myself. A, a sports person should be able to tell the coach that, the parent, those things, boost the self. It's that tap on the shoulder. How many people do it? How many, how many coaches think they're good with what they do? And also, when you are in the thinking part, positive, you have that positive attitude. Accept, the, accept a mistake, but I, it's to a positively accept a mistake. Accept the outcome and fully commit to the next one. There's a lot to say about positive psychology, thinking. There's a lot to say about acceptance and commitment. Um, the one thing that he, people hear are the task or the process focus. Be Task focused. Focus on the process because by doing this, and this is so important, if you are here, you get that positive attitude. What you want? You build yourself up, you build confidence up, you strengthen your own confidence. Because this is what you want. This is what an athlete wants. So there's a lot. And to finish, if you think and talk here, you get that. This is my loss. Then focus is on what you want to do, what you should do. Of course, now there's positive emotions. So body reacts to their and mood state is there. And to what does this lead? This leads to your positive performance. But then there's the feedback. It should be like this. From coming off the field, coming from the training session, even coming from the gym. Aha! It goes right to there. So, yes, I got this right. Feedback. To whom? To self, first of all, and to others. Thank you. I'm going to end here. But I do believe that you got my message. My message is, cut the knots. Cut the negative words. Cut the moan and the groan and the break yourself and break the athlete down. Encourage. Build up. Make it a goal so that every coach 
teacher and parent, set the goal to build confidence, emotional certainty in the child or the person you work with. Encourage. And if you're an athlete, build yourself up. Even a coach, build yourself up. Be proud of yourself. Remind yourself of what you can do. That's great. Because that will help sport in South Africa to go forward and help athletes to reach the positive performance that they want. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Marietta, for a very interesting and uh, informative workshop. And uh, I was wondering if there are any questions. There's one question from Dr. Koket Yotsebe. Thank, thank you so much, Marietta. I think for me it's a comment particularly uh, when it comes to the wording, the language you use to say, I will try, I will see. I think that's very important that you need to challenge said wording to do uh, with action words that I'm going to do it. Because it starts from there. Yes. And it will influence the, the action that you're going to take after that. Truly liked your presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Koketju. And this is yes, because I was so aware of my time running out. The try, the hope, the wish, the I'll see is out. That's negative language. Do. Do is the positive word. And I always say do, even if you do 700,000 million times. Do it. Tell yourself, I'll get it right. Thanks, Kukechu. That and you reminded me now to add that word. Thank you. Okay, online, Professor Grabella writes, Dear Maretta, I love the traditional black pen and whiteboard approach. It makes for authentic presentations. Mm -hmm. Most coaches will have access to these resources and or may not have time to develop PowerPoint slides, etc. Thanks also for your positivity about sports psychology and your long-term contribution to the field in South Africa. Where to, uh, where to next for the field of sports psychology to develop the coaches and athletes of tomorrow and to realize the notions of an active and a winning nation? I'm not sure if that's a question. Let's just double check. Where to next for the field of sports psychology to develop the coaches and athletes of tomorrow and to realize the notions of an active and winning nation? Thank you very much, Heinrich. I'm glad you logged in, and I really appreciate your comment, because this is what our country, our athletes, our coaches, our teachers, our sports psychologists, our parents need, is to have a very positive mindset. Any other questions? Not questions. Thanks. There's a question in the house. Okay. Thank you. I just want to ask you if um, did you work with the coaches? The reason I ask this is because if all sports, golf, you know, particularly with the swing and uh, different, you work with different athletes that could be tennis players, anybody. There are technicalities in the sport which people say, oh, you have to have a golf swing like this. You have to do this, and um, in tennis. Uh, the old-fashioned swing, you know, when you turn to put your, your, yes. your racket here, whereas now you will play more often yes. with an open stance. Now, I just wondered if you were, so an athlete, obviously, like you say, must say, I can, I can do. But sometimes they can't do because the coach is not taking into account what they do. And even golf swings, if you look, they have yes. hitches and glitches, but there are different yes. types of swings. So I was just asking, do you work with the coaches in terms of that? Because sometimes a child, physically, mentally, or because they're inherently gifted, hit the, hit, do something.
something slightly different, which doesn't really impact on what yes. they do um, and how they do it. I, I just wondered, you know, do you work with the What you say is important regard? because, yes, like you know, in tennis, everyone cannot do the the Federer or Nadal or Djokovic or whoever's um, surf. And there was a time, few, a decade or what ago, when it was, I want to swing like Tiger. And uh, unfortunately, every person is different. Tiger, there's only one Tiger, and that's Tiger. Yes, I do like to work and to connect with coaches. I'm, because I'm in private practice, I see the the athlete, I see the parents. If it's a child, um, school-going child, I like to make contact with the parents. Um, I often teach parents, hey, it doesn't help. I teach your child to think and talk positively, but you at home. So it becomes a family project. I, I like to make contact and to collaborate with a coach, and I do so. I have contact with many coaches of my clients. Um, because it's about the person. That is important. Okay. Um, Thank you very much, Katrin. Um Online we have just positive, okay, a well-simplified presentation for almost everyone to understand. After this information, I can boldly claim that my approach to coaching has changed. I've just realized that as amateur coaches, we often put too much emphasis on the negative things that our players do instead of encouraging them to focus, improving on the positives. Thank you for the presentation, Duso Poison from Jorkabi District. Uh, Andrew Dean says, thank you, Prof, a timely and invaluable reminder of, all so, uh, of the also easy trap of negativity, by, uh, negativity bias which I exposed to in everyday society. Lorraine Tate says, thank you, Prof. My rate are so informative for coaches and athletes. Thank you for such knowledge, Shirley Koza. Nigel Gumatela says, what an excellent presentation, Prof. Maretha. Khalid or Khalid Railun, or Railon, sorry. This is so much, uh, Khalid. He writes, this is so, thank you so much. Linda says, Linda Mold, thank you so much. It's all thank yous to So Poison, a very informative presentation. Thank you. I've got a question, maybe. Um, isn't hope, hope the seed for self-belief or to have faith in yourself? How can that be, be a negative? I know in Bible terms, biblical yep. terms, it's hope. And to me, it goes with that. It's, we have this, we hope. <laughs> Okay, sorry for that. But if you take the word, to me, confidence is linked to emotional certainty. And that is exactly how we want every single sports person to be. Certain of, I can, I know how, I'm good at it, I've practiced it, I've learned it. And now the person that comes and says, I hope today, my serves will be in. I hope I'll, I'll get that goal kick. I hope I can do the time that I'm supposed to run or swim. It's self-doubt. To me, that's to me the psychological value of hope, that hope. I hope to make birdies today when you play golf. How certain are you? Because I always ask my clients, how certain are you about this? Are you certain? You say, today I'm going to focus to make birdies. Today I'm going to trust my ability. I'm going to trust my decision making. I'm good at get my surf in. Today I'm going to focus to get that in. So to me, in my language, my psychological mind, hope equals self-doubt, a little bit. Thank you so much, Marietta. I think uh, if there are not any other questions, uh, we can conclude this session. Uh, please, uh, colleagues, especially online colleagues as well, there is an evaluation form that I included in the chat box. Uh, it is on an online platform. If you can just complete the evaluation form, It'll give us some indication of what we can improve 
and how to address this in future presentations. Thank you so much. It'll take you about one to two minutes to complete, so it's not very long. You just click on the link, and when you click on the link, it'll take you to the platform with quite a few questions, only a few, and uh, you, can, you can then complete that. Don't leave without doing it. <laughs> <laughs> so Stay let me rather and say, do it. please do it. Yes. Thank you very much. I just want the last word. Please allow me. On which microphone am I now? Thank you. Um, I just please allow me and bear with me, because I feel it very strongly, and I to have a vote of. Yes, my vote of thanks to, first of all, the Eastern Cape Department of Sport, Recreation, Arts and Culture for financing, the financial support to present this conference via the Eastern Academy, uh, Eastern Cape Academy of Sport. And there are two people here that I really thank from the bottom of my heart, and that is Mr. Makubalu, and Mr. Harman Terbrach. Thank you so much. Um, specific also for us at Sports Psychologists, you, this means tremendously. It means a big lot. Okay. And then um, I want to thank the Fort Hare University's Faculty of Health Sciences for hosting our conference through the Health Science Institute. Um, it is fantastic. We appreciate that we do this. And Professor Leon van Niekerk is part of this faculty. And I met the head of faculty. I met the dean. And thank you to all, because this is, this is what sports psychology needed. And um, we now had this very first South African conference on sports psychology and development. Um, all the presenters, everyone here, and even Professor Ankebi Creer that came from all the way from Northwest, thanks to the financing of the Eastern Cape um, Sport Academy, to present yesterday her her knowledge, her speeches, what she has. But to all the presenters, thank you for coming. Thank you for your input. Thank you for your research that you are doing. Everyone this two days gave something special. And it was amazing. We all did a different thing. So thank you very much. And keep up with your good work. I appreciate it. And Professor Van Niekerk, thank you so much for organizing this event. Um, you have been thanked very often, but we will keep on saying thank you to you because I know there are more to come. And thank you to everyone. And then a very, very big thank you to all involved with the administration um, and the arrangements to bring all this together. This was actually my first virtual conference, and it was absolutely high standard, five star. I want to thank Ramona um, Chalmers for all her, all her organization. She even, she, she even see to it, and that was with the um, other people that we are, we are checked in for our flights back. Mr. Gary in Bluevu, I learned a lot from you regarding technical aspects, Gary. Thank you. And Mr. Dan Siegel. Thanks a lot to them. And then every single administrator in the office of the dean and our photographer that was here yesterday and the caterers. The caterers did a very fine job to keep us with constant deliciousness and great foods and drinks. So everyone, this is the final word. Thank you. And to the people that logged in, we appreciate you logging in. We appreciate you watching our present, uh, presentations because without people that logged in, there would have been no conference. Thank you and goodbye.
Monkey. Hmm. Oh, Leon. With that then, colleagues, I do close this uh, 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 conference and hope to see you soon in another one we're going to organize. Hopefully, there will be the first African conference in 2023 to which we are building up. And uh, we will inform all of you about that where scholars and psychologists, sports psychologists from all over Africa will have uh, an opportunity to share all their research and all their practical experience with all of you. And we are aiming for September 2023. We will be on the lookout for you and we'll send the information around so that you can also uh, spend that time with us. Take care and thank you for your participation and your questions and uh, availing yourself for the last two days to be part of this. Thank you very much. With that, I close the conference. Goodbye. Thank you. Oh, great. Oh, and thank you for your presentation.